this episode of Tapes and Lunatics Talk Today is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This Luca Parrish, and you are listening to Vacation the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? What about our Quasar podcast? <laughs> Wendell Vaughn, the first Earthman ever appointed protector of the universe, bonded to the energy transforming quantum bands that are both weapons and symbols of a station, he fights an ongoing battle to defend all life in the universe from cosmic evil as Quake. Hello and welcome back to the Quantum Zone, episode 143. Yes, it's still Star Blast. I am Phil, <laughs> but he was always master of the Quantum Zone. I am Will. Hey, everyone. And master of the uh, follically strong, it is. Uh, this is this is Matt. I am the master of needing a haircut, Matt Kona. Got to get them clipped. He's like the male Medusa, man. That beard's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we get to our uh, issue tonight, Fantastic Four 36, uh, I thought I would throw it out to uh, the co-host here. All right. Let's start off. Mr. Will Allred, how is the uh, Kickstarter going for Crossover Division? Uh, very well, actually. We're almost 50% funded, uh, so we're on track, and things are looking good. But, uh, you know, the more the merrier, so if anybody's out there want to give it a shot, we'll hit you with the links later. Nice. So I see you've been making some appearances. Uh, yeah, I did a podcast. I've done a couple of podcasts actually yeah um that rob southgate guy yeah yeah cool yeah. <laughs> that was a yeah. that was really fun uh i think it was go fund this is yeah that was the name of it it's uh yeah. that was a lot of fun discussion and then i did uh i just did one today that probably won't go up until like the third and then we had a live stream with uh a couple other creators about uh, a print that we're gonna all Kind of share with people back all three of our campaigns and that was i think that was like an hour and a half it was it was a lot of fun good yeah discussion good questions yeah i was gonna say not this weekend but next weekend we're gonna have cat on so on with the lunatics oh sweet yeah so yeah we're gonna wait you we're gonna have cat on yeah so because i guess rob talked to her he's like oh yeah she really wants to be on I was like, okay. yep she's awesome her like father like daughter is is kicking tail. Uh, she's already funded and going for stretch goals at this point. So. Nice. And on the other side of the coin, just today. Hey, I, I'm I'm helping to fund one of Will's projects, so I'm available for podcasts too. If anyone <laughs> wants to interview me. Oh, oh no, I was going to say a podcast <laughs> went up with you just today of this recording. Uh, I saw you were on into the, another episode of Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Nice. I didn't get the um, yet, but uh, I can't wait. Uh, yeah, it was it was a fun time. It was a very early morning on Monday, seven a.m. our time, and uh, you know we made and it I, work though. It and fun. I saw you guys talk to Bendis Avengers issue. <laughs> <laughs> we did an annual, the first and only of its kind in the run annual. That wasn't really like an annual. It was just like a regular book, but a few pages but, longer. So like I said, I didn't listen to it yet, <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyone interested, it, it was Into the Night, episode 174. Then oh, wow. in a few weeks, episode 177, I believe she said, will be Will of Hellfire's Isle of Ra. So. Ooh. Nice. So I, Very nice. Did, did she have fun? Oh, yeah. She said it was, it was great. Yeah, they had a blast. You know, you know, Ray. Ray makes everyone feel, feel welcome. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it was awesome. But, 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 but I said, but I said, just they, you know, today, Matt Conan, like three weeks, Lil Hellfire. I'm like, Ray, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending feedback. Nah, Ray's great. Uh, oh, and one more, one more time, I want to give a. Uh, I did it when Lil thought and I. Uh, we just recorded the last uh, Ultimate Spider Cast of the year since she's going to be away. Uh, 
I want to give a shout out to uh, my my comics guy, Elvin at In Infinity Comics and more because not only I didn't read it yet, but he gave me all this week's book and I got all of next week's DC books. Uh, well, oh, I got, very cool. I got, I got Strange Adventures. I didn't read it yet, but I got it. <laughs> but no, is that, is that number eight. Oh, was it seven? I think maybe seven. Was it, okay. Seven or eight. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't read it is yet. Is it? Is it? It's going to be twelve issues, right? I believe it's twelve. Yeah, because that I think that's okay. what he does like the Mister Miracle. And yeah, I think it's usually twelve. Mm -hmm. But no, that and like no, the big shout out is that uh, might have got Luca hooked on the comics because yeah, he got uh, ten dollars from my grandparents. We were going to the comic store. He was like, he was like, can I buy something? I'm thinking, oh, he's going to buy a Funko or something. He goes, no, I want to buy comics. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, picked out like three yeah. comics. He picked out like three Spider-Man comics, and then uh, I think the total would come to like ten something. But uh, yeah, Elvin saw he had like ten dollar a ten dollar bill in his hand. He's like, "No, it's ten dollars." I'm like, okay. <laughs> "Very I'm cool." Dating tactic. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for a kid, ten bucks at the comic book store. I mean, you can get you get some good stuff. That's great. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he got it. Young. It was like, what is that? The Marvel something or other. It's like it's like I think the Spider Man book here towards kids, but then the, the two of those oh, the Mar was it Marvel Adventures Spider Man, maybe? Uh, it's it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was two of those and then he got a uh, Marvel Tales issue. It was like a Spider Man Daredevil team up. Nice. Yeah, so yeah, so thanks again. Yeah, and again, people, you know, support your uh, local comic shops, small businesses, and hey. You help them, they help you out. Yeah. That's right. All right. So now what else is going on since this will be in December, but we're recording this the night before Thanksgiving. That's right. Um, That's true. I'm trying to think. Oh, the Kickstarter it. has, has uh, taken all my mental energy at, at, at the moment. <laughs> hey, hey, Will, you want to make a statement? I am God. <laughs> nice. Star Blast is the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Yeah. Slow down. We need this for drops. Slow down. We need this for drops. Slow down. We need this for drops. <laughs> Matt Coda with the drop warning. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but Matt, I was just telling Will, I don't know what cable system you have, but uh, I know in our direct TV, this all this weekend, like all the movie channels are doing like a free preview, like the HBO, the Maxes, the Stars, the Showtimes. Oh yeah, HBO Max, man. They keep putting out stuff that intrigues me, but I haven't taken the dive yet. I haven't uh, gone for it, but... Oh, uh, you you waiting for like the 20-hour Justice League Snyder cut? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but... Like Conan O'Brien is a variety show on it. Oh, you that's know. right. Let me check that out. I haven't checked that out yet. I listened to his podcast. Yeah. I, heard, I remember him saying yeah. talking about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, Seth Rogen did a movie about a guy who is uh, pickled in time. And it's, it's sort of like an Encino man, but with pickling or something. I did. <laughs> a guy I did he, does he like literal, literally pickled like in juice? Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. It seems intriguing, like a funny movie, but... Um, and then they just got a bunch of old stuff, uh, you know. But. It looks like they have a bunch of comedy specials on there too, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah we no we get ours those. through through Amazon, and I think that they said that HBO Max is going to be part of that. So that you know, as long as we're already buying HBO through Amazon, yeah. so Max is included now. Uh, we don't, yeah, so I, I yeah, I think that works. I yeah, we do ours through the direct TV. But yeah, I think it's if you have any kind of HBO subscription, I think you just get HBO Max, yeah. Which I've been watching more of that than the actual HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Although we've been watching old shows. I Luke is on a big bang theory kick now. Oh nice. He's just, just taking massive hit sitcoms from different decades oh yeah he was yeah he was on friends for a while now he's on big bang theory yeah it's yeah. funny because like he's almost like pulling a sheldon because like he he learned about sarcasm from that show because <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we were here the one day and i was like uh i don't know danielle left the folder out i was like i was like oh i'm like i just love when mom leaves the 
leaves that out. And he goes, was that sarcasm? <laughs> I'm like, yes, Sheldon, that was sarcasm. <laughs> Uh, so everybody, uh, guys, doing all right? Yep. Oh, I'm doing great, baby. The, uh six six day uh, weekend for Thanksgiving for me. Woo! Oh. Nice. <laughs> I don't go back till Tuesday. Woo. Not bad. I'm, I'm probably when this hits the podcast, I'm probably sitting there listening to this at work. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot yourself. Sorry, but past self is having a blast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, six days off. And then I got a big, I got like two weeks off for Christmas. Nice. December 18th is the last day, man. Very nice. I know. Oh, it's, it's so hard to get. The longer the break, the harder it is to go back. Meanwhile, That's true. Meanwhile, Will's been teaching from home for the majority of the year, huh? <laughs> well, working from home. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, nope, the uh, I'm on a bit of a sabbatical from the teaching, the uh, night teaching. Yeah. Actually, it's and I'm kind of. I took. Uh, I think I stopped doing the night class stuff about a year ago. Focus more on the comic work, and I'm kind of glad I did because one of the, the thing that energizes me most about teaching is that interaction in a class. You know, yeah, the, being there. I don't. I don't think I would have done very well with the Zoom meetings or like that just because, you know, it's it's not the same. You know, you don't get that energy back when you're putting it out over a, you know, a Zoom meeting as opposed to being in class where you can, you know, gauge things. It, it just, you know, I, I guess it worked out all right, but uh, I still do miss teaching. I'm going to have to start doing it again one of these days, but uh, I want to make some comics first. Hey, nothing wrong. Selfish with man. <laughs> hey, bring joy to the world through comic. <laughs> oh, and then I know what Matt Cone has been up to. Every time I see, oh, there's an Instagram story. It's like just like his dog attacking other dogs or something. <laughs> I just, I just put my uh, my dog's morning routines at the dog park on Instagram. Pretty much every morning. So if you're an early riser, you can you can see him fresh off the. Uh, Presses. <laughs> does yeah. does the dog wake you up every morning? Not always. Sometimes I'm I'm just like used to being woken up, so I'm just getting up at that time. So there's been a few times where I've woken up before her, and uh, which is fine. <laughs> it's it's preferred my preferred method because she's I got we got to cut her nails, which makes me very, very uncomfortable. So she sometimes wakes you up by just. Swatting you in the face with a big <laughs> paw, and uh, you know, yeah, what kind of dog? It's a lab, black lab. Shelly oh, is wow. her name. Yeah, she's I'll, a big dog. Then I was gonna say, yeah, she's just six months now, but she's getting big. She's gonna get big, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She that's. I mean, Otis. Right now, you can see the painting in the background. There are. Uh, <laughs> But um, he's, we took him to the vet today and just you know, kind of some checkup stuff. And he weighs in at 71 pounds. 71 pounds. That's he more is than, a big little dog. That's more than, that's yeah. More than, that's more than my seven year old kid. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a low rider. There's, uh, uh, now you know, here you go, uh, Basset Hounds. Their bones are so dense that they do not float in water. They will sink. Wow. He's like Wolverine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, when you said the big old paw on the face, I, I totally sympathize, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Was he older? Because I know like my parents, like they they had an old uh, beagle. And like, yeah, he was like a low rider there. <laughs> No riders for life, man. <laughs> yeah. He's he's gonna be two on December fifth, so he he's starting to calm down some. I mean, he still has puppy attacks where he wants to you know run around and play and be crazy. But uh, yeah, one thing that bassets like to do that I'm perfectly fine with 
He's lay around and sleep a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like yeah, my parents have a cat and a dog, and like before these ones, they had like another. Well, they had like two cats and a dog. But yeah, Kona, you think it's bad that dogs want you in the face? I think it was one of the last cats. Like my dad would get up in the morning and feed them, and it's like I think he said uh, one of the other old cats. If he didn't get up to feed him in time, they would just sit on his head. <laughs> He's probably like sleeping in bed. The cat would just like sit on his head. Like, Shelly's probably going to be 80 pounds, right? So that would be kind of rough sitting on your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, when I was a kid, my one aunt had a black lab. And I mean, if, if it got up on its hind legs, it could put its like its front paws on my dad's shoulders. My dad's like six foot tall. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> that thing's <laughs> that dog gets as big as it's going to get. It might be as big as you are. That's true. So. Here we go. Looking forward to it. <laughs> one one thing about uh, about little Otis over there is that uh, I think he sheds a, another full dog about every day. It seems like you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I always said I, as a kid, I always went on like a golden retriever, but I'm like I would never get one now because oh my god, you know how much those things shed. <laughs> Oh man! I had like a friend of a friend who had one, and I was like, "Oh my God, you build like another dog with what they shed in there." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, how long have you had Shelly? Six. Uh, well, we've had her since um, I don't know, maybe, maybe like two months. No, no, three three months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So. <laughs> She's six months old, but we didn't have her since she was a puppy. She was like four, three or four months. Uh huh. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So should we get to should we get to tonight's main event? Let's All right. <laughs> Fantastic Four three eighty six. Uh, March nineteen ninety four. The cover claims it's part eleven. Is that true? Well, <laughs> part 12, so. Yeah. <laughs> close, close. Oh, Lord, I see the Felco. The last blast before the end of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so. <laughs> I love that the, you're going to get the summary of the, you know, the book at, at the top there. I love the book Fantastic Four, but they only mentioned the thing, the Invisible Woman, and uh, the Human Torch. You know, because Reed Richards is supposedly dead. Supposedly dead, yeah. Yeah. At least throw Ant Man in there or something. <laughs> All right, so. And you get to you get to see a birth. That's they they bury the the lead, but they just stick that in the bottom panel of the cover. That's right, kids. Matt Kona's going to give birth live tonight on the court. <laughs> and the, page, the top of the page has a Star Blast crossover, which directly followed the events of Namor, the Submariner 48. It, sh it should have been like, yes, follows Namor, and none of the other uh, issues of the <laughs> of Star Blast are completely unimportant to this. <laughs> at least they at least they pointed you in the right direction. Yeah, go check out Namor. Yeah. The title, and then came Despair. Dun, dun. All right. While Lija goes into labor half a world away, Sue and Ben, with the aid of the Submariner and a few of his friends, have managed to destroy the Earth Thruster housed within the Marianas Trench. But now, don't rock the boat. Hey, what's the big idea? Who's shaking up the stealth talk? Tis this I see quake grim. Who is he, Thor? Tis a sea quake grim. The force of the exploding Earth thruster is causing the walls of Challenger Deep to rain upon us. Hey, I thought it was only Mrs. Paul trying to nab you for a new frozen fish recipe. <laughs> and of course, Tom DeFuco, words, plot, Paul Ryan, pencils. Our boy Paul Ryan. Danny Belandy, inks, Rock Whitson. Andriani colors, Dave Sharp letters, Ralph Macchio editor. Ooh. Yeah, good. They didn't let the Felco edit himself. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's enough, Ben. The Stealth Hawk was built for space travel. Its external forced aura should keep the hull secure. 
as it, as it would if this were a simple meteor shower, but that won't prevent us from being buried alive. You've got to get us out of here. Yeah, yeah, even I managed to figure that out. Only trouble is, the engines won't ignite. Pointy ears and I must have screwed up the electrical system while we were tussling earlier. We're dead in the water. Some leader I am, Reed would have known what to do, but I haven't the slightest idea. I never realized what it would be like making such decis decisions under such pre. Oh my god, they're uh, they're in the ocean. She has to make all these under decisions pressure. under pressure. <laughs> There's no need to panic, Susan. Tiger Shark and I have the necessary strength to push this craft to safety. Yeah, I'm sure we do. Too bad it ain't gonna happen. In case you haven't noticed, I don't give up. Guppy's kill for you or your air breathing buddies. Tamara's the only one I care about, and we can easily bust out of here and swim to safety. Uh, I think it was me. Tiger Shark, please, we're all in this together. Please aid Prince Namor for me. And so, let me see Namor and Tiger Shark outside in the ocean. Tiger Shark, I. Don't make a big deal out of this, pal. It doesn't change a thing between us. I ain't here for you. All right, so some people grunt when they lift. What does Namor do? Whatever your motives, the Avenging Sun is now in your debt. Imperious Rex! Swell. We'll see if that, if you'll remember that the next time I go after Atlantis. Yahoo! Steering through the undersea boulders is almost as much fun as riding the bumper cars at Coney Island. You certainly have a weird definition of fun, Mr. Graham. It comes with the territory, Dr. Newell. Xylem the Fermati is responsible for Earth thrust and the destruction of the Benari, but I shall have vengeance. Tamara sounds so bitter, and I don't blame her. I barely survived losing Reed, even though I'm certainly still alive somewhere. She was forced to witness the extermination of her entire race. And meanwhile, in a midtown hospital located back in Manhattan, uh, this woman is I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just a nurse, right? Yeah. It's a figure like that. That no, doesn't matter. I just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was I Johnny? It was Johnny Storm. Is that you? I think it was Will. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take it easy, Elijah. The doctor's already on his way. Yeah. Who was Elijah? Uh, what difference will it make, Johnny? No Earth physician. Uh, I. Me. Uh, what difference does it make, Johnny? No Earth physician is schooled in scroll biology. Maybe not, young lady, but I have plenty of experience when it comes to delivering babies. I hope you have a strong stomach, doctor. I hope you have a strong. Oh, that's you. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> no, it was you. It was you. I thought it was pointing to yeah. Johnny, but it. Uh, I hope you have a. Str <laughs> I hope you have a strong stomach, doctor. Because the girl, this girl stinks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. What's she talking about? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. I, I just know you're, you're going to need, need this. this. <laughs> oh, yes, Johnny, right? Oh. I think it's that Johnny. Johnny. That yeah. is. I, I'm not sure. I just know that you're going to need this. What's on earth? This is a scroll birthing device, Doctor. Elijah will explain. For Excuse, I'm afraid it isn't for birth, and neither is she. We have a patient about to give birth, nerd. Let's get to work. So, the, wait, so that thing's like a like scroll stirrups or something? Who knows? <laughs> Ooh. Right. Be at peace, Johnny Storm. Your woman is in good hands. <laughs> She's not exactly my woman, Triton, but thanks for the support. I feel a whole lot better if only Reed could be here to watch over her. All right, and I guess back in the ocean, but they don't give us a meanwhile or anything. All right, uh, I never realized how much we routinely depended on Reed to watch over us. Ben is struggling to repair the stealth hawk, but it would have been child's play for Reed. I ain't no blasted electrician, but this ought to get us running. I have every confidence in you, Mr. Graham. Which one of us, Doc? 
Susan, from the pained expression on your face, it's fairly obvious that you're thinking of Reed. I just want to say, save your sympathy, Namor. Contrary to what others may believe, I know that my husband is still alive somewhere, and I am determined to find him. I understand, Susan. I merely wish to offer my assistance in your quest. Namor, I thank you. I should have realized that I could always depend on you. If only the submariner, submariner's eyes caressed me as gently as they do that air breather. <laughs> <laughs> Namor, I don't mean to interrupt, but I was just monitoring the subspace frequencies and I detected a most intriguing transmission. I'm... S oh, uh, let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll take this guy. It's one of the other ones, right? So... I am certain Lord Skeletron will be appropriately impressed with your efficiencies, Lime. It takes real talent to lose a single planetary thruster. You lost two. Uh, be reasonable, Fabricant. I did as I was instructed. The plan itself was obviously flawed. Only your flaw was, only our only flaw was in choosing you. Star Blasters accept only one excuse for failure. Wait, there is no need for the ultimate punishment. My mission was to distract Earth's heroes with a planetary disaster. Oh, so that was the whole thing. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. A goal which can only be accomplished if I employ my ship to generate a massive tidal wave. You have won a reprieve's line. Do not squander it. Uh, uh. I'll be this guy. I don't understand, Fabricant. We have already achieved our objectives on the planet Earth. As shown in Star Blaster's limited series, Ralph Blaster. <laughs> As clearly shown in this limited series. Uh, <laughs> what purpose will the formal halty serve by causing an unnecessary distraction at this stage? None, unless he inadvertently spares us the task of eliminating him ourselves. <laughs> but even as Slime focuses on his new mission, an unaccustomed chill drills down Johnny Storm's spine. Though he instinctively raises his body temperature, it does little good. I wanted to be with Elijah, but the doctor would only allow emergency personnel in the living room. I know I should try to put up a brave front for the others, but I keep thinking about the way the FF's luck has been running lately. He recently lost Reed. What if something should go wrong with Lijo, the baby? Try to relax, Johnny. All expected fathers are nervous. I am sure the doctor is doing his best. But will it be enough? You obviously care very deeply for this woman. Yeah, well, we, we used to be married. But that was before I learned she was a scroll and only pretending to be human. It's kind of a complicated story. We have time. Right. Trayton and the torture old buddies it isn't right for me to intrude. I may as well find a phone and check in with my daughter. I don't blame Johnny for being a basket case. I was worse when Cassie was born, and we didn't have half the complications. She was so excited when I got this job with the Fantastic Four. I just hope I didn't join in time to witness the final breakup. Uh, but 300 miles... Uh, 300 miles west of the California coastline, Zyme completes his final frantic preparation. While at that precise moment, flying over the ocean, uh, we have to uh, we have to reach Zyme before he can he triggers that tidal wave. Can the spell talk go any faster? Sure, I could always kick this baby into hyperdrive, but then we'd risk overshooting our mark by a few dozen light years. Seems like the Fantastic Four hasn't had a moment's peace the past few months. We keep jumping from one crisis to the next. It's only a matter of time before the never-ending strain and constant stress makes us careless. And one mistake is all we'll get. Heads up, we're almost on top of Zyme's ship, but I'm detecting a massive power buildup. Look at the energy cocoons cocooning his ship. He must be activating his wave accelerator. What should we do? I'm we assuming all of those were... Stingray. Yeah, you can't tell who's saying it. Yeah, we have no choice. Hundreds of lot, hundreds of thousands of lives are at stake. He must be stopped now. When she opens fire, uh, 
Are you out of your mind? Why'd you fire that missile? Did you hear what it sounded like? <laughs> I'm pl playing with the format. Okay. We're supposed to be good guys, not cold-blooded murderers. This sure ain't the FF I, I stand up for. Maybe not, but I stand by my decision. Drastic situations sometimes call for drastic solutions. Is Ben right? Did I overreact? It's like something Malice would have done. I thought I was finally free of her, but her evil persona might have been bonded to my psyche so long that I have actually begun to think like her. While I personally applaud the invisible woman's actions, Liam may yet live. And again, no meanwhile or whatever, but back in the hospital. Doctor, the patient's heart rate is all over the map and her blood count defies analysis. Not, not surprising considering the circumstances. Young lady, if your babies have any chance for survival, you better explain this, whatever it is, fast. How much do you know about scrolls, Doctor? Very little, I'm afraid. We, we are a race of shapeshifters. By a conscious act of will, we can assume other physical forms through muscular expansion and contraction. However, the trauma of the birthing process saps our mental control, endangering both mother and child. The Licardo, uh, the, the, the Licardo you hold is a birthing device, a special salve which you will, will reduce me to a near liquid state so that the baby can easily be taken. Ah! I, I thought this one was some kind of mutant, and she's a creature from another planet. She's our patient, nurse. If you or anyone else have a problem with that, leave now. The rest of us have work to do. And then back at at the ship again, over the ocean. Uh, In winter. I think that's, yeah, I think that's Ben. I think. Oh, is it? Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, ooh, I managed to snag the two-bit hunk of junk before it sunk into the ocean. All I need now is a recycling container big enough to dump. <laughs> nice work, Graham. The rest of us will get into gear and check that wreck for survivors. These speakers will allow Tamara and me to communicate underwater with Newell's stingray armor and Susan's pressure suit. Hey, what about me? You and the thing are staying behind. You gotta be kidding. Quit your belly aching, Tiger Shark. You ain't exactly my idea of a fun date either. Now move it, people. This tractor beam ain't gonna hold forever. And back at the hospital. You and Lyda have survived many crises together, Johnny. I am certain you will survive this as well. But I, I do not possess adequate words to express my grief over the death of Reed Richards. You and me both, pal. Time and again, the illustrious leader of the Fantastic Four came to the aid of the Inhumans. He even invented the air-breathing apparatus, which I now wear. He had a spirit and courage second to none. He routinely cheated almost certain death, such as that as when I was called to rescue him from the debris belt of the negative zone. Any other man would have long since surrendered to despair, not Reed Richards. Is there no hope, no matter how slim, that he still lives? Not as far as I'm concerned, but Sue thinks so. Then the possibility does exist. I, I guess anything is possible in this crazy world of ours. That would mean Dr. Doom may have also survived. And even as the torch's blood runs cold, <laughs> our attention suddenly shifts to the tiny kingdom of Latveria as jagged as jagged questions tangle the air. Where is our beloved master? Why has no one seen him in weeks? Rumors abound of his untimely demise. True, but we have heard such tales in the past, and they always proved false. Wait, look at the parapet walk. It's him. It's Dr. Doom. An approving roar rises from the crowd. A grim figure appears before his cheering subjects. Uh, then without a backward glance, his mind riveted on matters far beyond their simple joy. He returns to his brooding castle. I don't know how he has a nickname for it. <laughs> I wonder how these poor people would react if they knew this entire world teeters on total destruction. Time has come to initiate phase two of my master plan. Safe from the prying eyes of all save his faithful robots, he activates a special ring on his right hand 
and slowly removes the iron mask to reveal the face of Nathaniel Richards. What? What? <laughs> As father of Reed Richards. I must locate my grandson at once. Only Franklin can avert the cat- cataclysm destined to come. And on that cheerful note, we return to the Pacific Ocean. Stay together. We mustn't be separated. This entire ship looks deserted. Could Xylem have already abandoned it? Perhaps, but no. I sense a, a, sense a strange mewing in my head. There he is. Help me, please. I cannot free myself. We've got to be careful. Any sudden shifts. Oh, no. Ben, Ben, can you hear me? What's happening up there? The tractor beam's starting to give. I can't hold on much longer. Get out. Get out now. Tamara, we must. No, I will not leave until I learn what has happened to the others of my race. There are no others. They were all destroyed with the last planetary thruster. I I am alone. And Namor's picking up the wreckage off him. Stand back. We can delay here no longer. Incredible. That hunk of debris must weigh a few dozen tons, and Namor's lifting it as easily as a child's toy. Hey, hurry it up, will ya? I can't hang around here forever. It's almost time for my coffee break. <laughs> the ship is collapsing around us. Uh, did anybody bother to note the location of the nearest exit? Follow me, Walter. My invisible force field will shield us. I don't mean to be pushy or nothing, but move it, move it, move it. <laughs> There's the portal. Hold tight, Susan. We're almost out, but will we make it in time? And back to the hospital. It's funny talking about Reed and all. I can't help but think back to when Franklin was born. Your nephew? Yeah, I've forgotten how hopeless things were back. looking back <laughs> then. Reed had learned... It's time for a flashback. Sorry. Reed had learned that radiation yeah. in Sue's blood was about to kill both her and the baby. Only one element could save them, and he was determined to find it, even if that meant braving the negative zone again. Things got pretty hairy, but Reed wouldn't quit. He wouldn't give up, no matter how overwhelmingly the odds kept stacking up against us. Not while the lives of his wife and unborn child were at stake. Eventually, his determination paid off. That's the spirit, Johnny. Any man can be destroyed, but some will never know defeat. But something new seems to be bothering you. I was just wondering. Whatever happened to Franklin? Glad you asked that question, Johnny. Because somewhere else, the teenage warrior known as Franklin Richards uh, battles for control of his very mind. For the past few months, malice has resided within Susan Richards' subconscious, influencing her every thought and action. Recently, she mind leaped into young Franklin, a psionic of immeasurable power. Uh, and now they both battle for supremacy. The side war is brutal, not even a hint of mercy, until and you see a big flash of light, and you see Franklin standing there with an evil look on his face. A victory is claimed. Ooh, I ain't seen a I ain't seen a shave close. Uh, I haven't seen a shave that close since Beavis trimmed butthead with a chainsaw. <laughs> okay, well I'm glad that it at least relates to Quasar a little bit in this issue. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Quasar, that's right. Very funny, Ben. Concentrate on getting. Very funny, Ben, in your topical humor. Concentrate on getting us home while the rest of us figure out what to do with our guests. I expect to be treated as an interstellar prisoner of war. Shut up. I know what I'd like to do with you. No, Tiger Shark. Xylem is guilty of crimes against the Banari. I insisted on his capture so that the ghosts of my race, my sisters whom he helped murder, could be laid to rest. And they shall never know peace until until he has been slain by one of their own. She flies at him with her staff. Impales of him. Yeah. Tamara! No, no. I, I never witnessed anything so calculatingly cold-blooded, and yet I am so revolted by the sheer brutality of her act, or because I see so much of the woman I have recently becoming Tamara. 
Am I destined to become as heartless a killer as she? Is this the legacy Malice has left me? Susan, please wait. Try to calm down. You don't understand. I've seen too much violence, too much death and destruction. The unrelenting stress and strain is finally getting to me. You needed to face it alone. <laughs> Meanwhile, around the corner of the corridor, Ben is thinking, what the? Sure doesn't take, take that, uh, that slimy fish face freak long to move in on the unhappy widow. And yet, maybe this is exactly what Susie needs to help start her getting over Reed. It was only a matter of time before she turned to someone. Although I would have thought, ah, oh, well, my kid, it would just ain't no contest. Who would you choose if you needed a shoulder to cry on? A handsome prince or the ugly monster? Oh. <laughs> and then back at the hospital. Doctor, I, I found something that the patient expelled. The patient expelled it as soon as she was reduced to this spongy state. Sometimes it happens during pregnancy. <laughs> during labor. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. It looks like some kind of implant. <laughs> we went too high. <laughs> Put it aside. We can't worry about it now. The baby's on the way. I can almost feel it. It looks, oh my god. What's taking so long? Why hasn't anyone told us anything yet? Johnny, these things take time. What if something has gone wrong? You have come too far, Johnny. You must, mustn't panic now. Wait, look who has arrived. Johnny, is there any word about Elijah or the baby? Not yet. Where'd you two come from? Ben dropped us off on the hospital's roof. He's out looking for a place to park the stealth hawk down. <laughs> it figures. He's probably hovering over the back streets uh, because he's too cheap to spring for a meter. Mr. Storm, I have news. What, what is it, Doctor? Why do you look so grim? Has something happened to Elijah? No, she she'll be fine. Then it's the baby. Mr. Storm, I, I don't know how to begin. I don't exactly know what to say. In all my years, I've never experienced anything like this. It's an egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a big golden egg. <laughs> so did, did the Star Blast crossover just lay an egg? Oh! <laughs> what do you mean, just? <laughs> So yeah, so so the ocean part of Star Blast is tied up. <laughs> Thoughts? Hey, that's to be wow. continued, though, man. Yes, but yeah. not the covering. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it even turns out to be a real baby. It's not a baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love any thoughts. Yeah, there we have it. That, yeah, I don't know, man. That, that was like a, it was a sort of a weird. If you were just a regular Fantastic Four reader, I mean, this is kind of a strange period for them anyway. With you no know, Reed mm -hmm. Richards in the book and uh, things like that, mentioning of Ben having a you know the kind of schoolboy crush. Yeah, uh, yeah, and being scarred and relegated to being the the Scotty of the Enterprise role. <laughs> you know. I, I mean, the Fantastic Four stuff was interesting, like Lodge's baby and stuff, but it's like, what yeah. the Star Blast stuff, what happened? They tracked down Z Zlime, they shot his ship, and then dug him out of the wreckage. Right. And then, uh, what's her name? Stabbed him. Yeah. Yep. Right. End of story. Yeah, and you get a little will they, won't they, Namor and uh, Sue Richards stuff. And I'm trying to remember, didn't Slime have people working for him, or it's just like, oh yeah, he's dead. Yeah, we're good. Right. Yeah. So it, it was. Uh, I mean, it looked good. It, oh, yeah. It, 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 All Ryan. Yeah. All Ryan. It moved, yeah, yeah. It moved. It had some flashbacks. Uh, but you know, it's just sort of suffering from. You got a big pot of strange characters just occasionally they'll fight for a few panels and pull them back and it just doesn't affect 
he ultimately that much. But I think I just missed Skeletron, basically. And the lack of Skeletron <laughs> upset me. In his in his uh, in his uh, deadly ribs. <laughs> deadly, yeah. deadly ribs. <laughs> Yeah, no offense, but I, I don't know. I, I think, think it'll, I think it'll be a little happier once we clear Star Blast. Yeah. Well, uh, um, yes and no because it means we're so close to the end. True, true, true. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, but then, but then, uh, starting with one fifty one, we get to do Squadron Supreme. That's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Mm-hmm. All right. And we'll have you know future Quasar appearances to do as we slowly move forward. Mm-hmm. And Marvel, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That will work, but uh, I, you know, there's there's kind of a long desert of Quasar appearances. You know, after the end of his book, you know, you've got Cosmic Powers Unlimited, Star Masters. Was about three issues, I yeah. think. Yeah, we'll yeah. Eventually, yeah. And then, I think it was what uh, Wade and Waringo on Fantastic Four, where he next appeared, and then Annihilation, where he kind of gets taken out. Spoilers. <laughs> and well, before that too. I mean, it's not a big thing, but like when the Avengers come back from Heroes Reborn, he's kind of yeah. in the in the crowd. But yeah, I mean, he's there. But he's one of the ones that uh, hears the call too. Yeah. So that's and that makes sense. And we get some good moments with him and Cap and you know everybody. So, but yeah, uh, I, but it's yeah. not until he, he we get kind of a renaissance of Quasar when he comes back in the Nova book. Oh yeah, right. Like we we'll get to the Nova. Yeah, mm-hmm. is, I, yeah. I think he kind of got. Uh, I think it hurt him in the nineties. Just one when the series ended, and two with the passing of Grunwald. I think that really. Yeah. But you know he's he's showed up in the latest. Uh, he's coming. He showed up in the previous Guardians of the Galaxy series a couple of times, maybe, and then he's coming. Supposedly, this one, yeah. supposedly. I mean, somebody I know talked to Al Ewing. I don't know who that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Because <laughs> you get that checked. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think the way Al was talking, I think he was just so far ahead in writing that, yeah, that's why it's taken a while to get to Quasar because just with the COVID during the break, I think he just wrote so far ahead. Mm-hmm. But yes, hopefully so. Yeah. Hey, I mean, the uh, I, Fantastic I, I, Four story is awesome. Yeah. Hey, I was gonna say I talked to Al Ewing, but so somebody else got a letter printed in Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't want to hear it. Wow, that's yeah. true. <laughs> I have a way with words. What can I say? <laughs> All right. So, should we hear what Ray had to think about this? Yeah, uh, certainly. All right. So, all right, everyone. For those, oh, I gotta bring the. Uh, picture up too of course uh for, all right hope again hopefully this is your first episode of the quantum zone uh but for those of you who may not know our friend ray from australia we've all been on his podcast well one of his many podcasts but yes always sends us weekly feedback but uh yes ray hosts several shows including uh last sons of krypton a superman podcast to know her is to fear her a Spider Woman podcast. Uh, I can hear him here the last Tuesday of every month talking Scarlet Spider with me and Matt Kona on Ultimate Spider Cast. But of course, the big one, the one he's known for, Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast, which I'm sure you'll be hearing much more of once that new series hits Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. So sit back for the next, what is it? A little over five minutes, and uh, here is a consummate expert talking all things Fantastic Four, three to six. All right, Ray. Do it. Hello, Mr. Drop King, Mr. Clippers, and Mr. Well Red. This is Ray. I'm uh, dropping in my thoughts. For the part 11, it seems, 
of Star Blast. Fantastic Four 386. Now, apologies again. You do hear some of the natural fauna <laughs> chattering away. Oop. And some cars as well. Just out and about. You know, doing your thing. Um, but yeah, I wanted to leave my thoughts on this issue. And uh, first up, again, I'd like to applaud the um, the artwork by Paul Ryan. I yep. uh, really do enjoy it. Uh, really just solid piece of artwork. I, I, I remember reading this and kind of, yeah, really taking note and admiring um, how, yeah, just how good and solid the, the art was. So um, hats off to the artist there. Uh, it really did improve the reading. Uh, having said that, though, I think most of the issue I really enjoyed. Um, I know it's really weird. I was I was counting the panels. Um, this this issue is chock a block. I mean, we're talking about stock standard on average about five six panels uh, per page, if not more. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, a lot of text and a lot of um, of scenes put into this. Um, but having said that, that was also quite enjoyable um, because it, it did make it feel satisfying to read through uh, a lot of characters to go through. And, and there were the, the two stories, I think, were well balanced, basically that of Johnny Storm and Lika. I think that's how she's, her name is called. Uh, and uh, the Submariner with Sue Storm and the Thing and Tiger Shark. Um, that was entertaining as well. Uh, I, I did like the... How how much of a Casanova is, is Namor? Oh, my gosh. Like, he's even got <laughs> Mara kind of swooning after him. Uh, and she's, you know, she's got Tiger Shark there. Uh, um, hopefully nothing comes of it because um, I don't want to say that Namor will be in trouble because he can hold his own. But he got Tiger Shark. He's quite an aggressive little fella. Um, he, you know, he might be not too happy if he hears that his girlfriend is kind of into the prince. Of the king of Atlantis, Rumpy, um, and also as well, there was an uh, it alluded to is Ben Grimm is he interested in Sue Storm because he catches Namor um, kind of confiding with Sue, and uh, he makes mention that oh you know um, I was hoping, and then it kind of stops, and he goes oh what was I thinking you know should be going for that suave kind of princely guy rather than like an ugly monster so i found that that an interesting little take um it was good to see slime back in there as well although he meets a a very grisly end um with tamara uh, unfortunately yeah so that that was pretty callous of her but i guess understandable uh and also uh, i guess just wanting to say that was a bit of a nice nice little cliffhanger at the end with the golden egg um, and I like this idea of how she becomes a like a spongy, liquidy state um, whilst giving birth, uh, and there's that weird device. Uh, I find all that that quite fun and entertaining. Uh, look, at the end of the day, does it really progress forward the the whole Star Blast event? No, but again, does that really matter? Not really for me. Uh, I just found it an entertaining book, uh, so I, I'd give this um, I'd give this maybe a B minus. Um, it, it had a lot of stuff in there; it was enjoyable. But having said that as well, there was no big punchline to this, uh, apart from if you can say the ending with with Lidia's, uh egg. But um, yeah, it had no really big X factor to this issue to really make it stand out so much. So, I mean, overall, I did enjoy it. Uh, and, and, geez, there's going to be a lot for you guys to, to read through in this one. Um, but it will be an enjoyable read. I watched, I listened, watched, listened. I read this on Marvel Unlimited. So I'll be doing so again when I listen to you, uh, you guys, and your review. But, uh, yeah, keep it all up. Um, may, you know, may slime rest in peace. And uh, let's hope the, the egg there's something good in that thing. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. Catch it. But yeah, I mean, that's a, that's like a weird thing. Like every so often a writer will be like, oh, does Ben have a thing for Sue? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, it's... I don't know. I I don't think it ever really worked for me, but you know, you can kind of bend the characters however you want, I guess. But uh, I think they fight you, <laughs> you know, if you if you try to bend them too far. And I mean, it's been a while since I've read a lot of those Kirby issues, you know, the Lee Kirby issues. But it, I always thought that Sue and Ben were like brother sister kind of thing you know well yeah that's, not, the, yeah that's the weird thing it's like some 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 of some writers try to have you know him have a thing for her other writers are like yeah they're like brother and sister mm-hmm. makes it kind of weird yeah i was just doing some i was just doing some reading on um on lija or lija however you however you pronounce it uh apparently the uh, implant that was taking out was the thing that gave her her powers. So when that was removed, she becomes just a normal shape-shifting scroll. Mm. Yes, and now you say that, I do kind of remember that. Oh, and uh, she just popped back up in uh, the current issue of Fantastic Four. What was that, like a week or two ago? So, yeah. Oh, and the egg was revealed not to be their child, but rather a scroll bioweapon. Yes. Which yes. Lyja subsequently destroyed after it hatched. Uh Kids. <laughs> but yes. Okay. But thanks for the we'll feedback, start. Ray. But yeah, slow it down when you send the feedback because remember. Slow it down. We need this for drops. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wilderness vibe to it though. I know. It's oh. like every 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 feedback now it's like, oh, watch out for the drop bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's like he's I think he's like outside at work or something. Mm-hmm. I swear, like half the time, he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "I read it before work. I'm gonna, I'll send you feedback before work." <laughs> yeah, because he sent it not too long before we started. So, yeah. Again, yeah. Time and we're taping this the, the we're taping this the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, I know that Ray, because he lives in Australia, and their religion doesn't celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still am. Th- I just want to say I'm thankful for Ray always leaving feedback every week. So. Yeah, yeah, I try to send awesome. feedback as much. Thanks, like- Ray. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Because of his religion, as Matt puts it, the, yes. ca- the country <laughs> of Australia's religion, they don't celebrate. <laughs> not celebrate Turkey Day. That's right. Yeah. Gobble yeah. gobble. <laughs> gobble gobble. <laughs> All right, so should I, should I tell them what's coming next, and then should we get out of here? Sounds like a plan, man. Sounds like a plan, Jan. That's right. All right. Uh, quantum Zone. We okay. So next time, I believe it's the conclusion of Star Blast, kids. Yay. Star Yay. Blast. Star Blast number four. And then the week after will be Quasar Fifty Seven. Which I believe we finally find out what Kismet's up to. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Her Macari. Oh yeah. All right, kids. So send us your thoughts on those. And then I think it's gonna be January after that, I believe. So yeah, send your thoughts. We're gonna be wrapping up the quasar ongoing. Uh email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38Capes. And remember to follow the Quantum Zone on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can find our Facebook group, uh, Grunwald Groupies. Uh, go over there and join us. Talk about all the comic book work and Mark Grunwald. Uh, but find links to all of the various Capes and Lunatics social media. Links to this YouTube. You can watch this video. Go, please go subscribe. Links to the Patreon. Links to merch. That's right. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Get all get your whole family capes and lunatics merchandise. <laughs> all right. So get links to all of that at linktree l i n k t r dot e e slash capes and lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors. Uh tweaked audio. Get yourself some great headphones. Uh hunt a killer. Uh since you're all we're all quarantining, get yourself a nice uh hunt a killer game. Fun for the whole family. Uh use the code Southgate for a discount on both of those. 
Uh, then go pick up Pod Life, the book, now on digital and paperback. Uh, I can pick that up on Amazon. And when you do, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network, and that many tentacled alien Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. What did you say? Please kick me in the pants. All right, Macona, where can people find you walking the dog? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Matt Kona. If you look at the stories, I have archived stories too because Instagram only lasts a day. You know, I, I I post pictures of me and my dog Shelly and her many wrestling opponents, and uh, that's pretty much the only thing I do besides this podcast. And so, but you can find me on social media all at Matt Kona. Yeah, we didn't get to this episode, so fuck it, Miller. Yeah, and, and, and check me out on Into the Night this week. That's right. Episode was at 174. Yes. There you go. Awesome. All right. Will All Red, Master of the Quantum Zone. Where can people find Crossover Division? I, well, you can find Crossover Division on Kickstarter right now. Yay. Um, you can find me at W A L L R E D. That's at Wall Red at Gmail and Facebook and Twitter is usually where I post a lot of stuff. So uh, that's, that's a good place. Uh, you can also then find um, Crossover Division is live on Kickstarter right now. And you can go to crossoverdivision.com slash K S for Kickstarter. And that'll take you right to the Kickstarter, uh, which really looks cool. I've got some. These are the stickers. Ooh, nice. I got some temporary tattoos, too, which I haven't tried out yet, but I've got them here. We'll see how those work. Uh, you can also find uh, my other published work, Diary of Night, at diaryofnight.com, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's lots of cool stuff about Quasar at uh, the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. They aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. <laughs> I'll put it you in know, there. Triton, I, I like Triton with that really deep heroic voice and he gets to say stupid crap like that. It's awesome. <laughs> I am God. <laughs> uh, again, great delivery. It's just great for uh, the drops. Star Blast, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right, everyone. Come back next time for the conclusion of Star Blast. Will the final chapter redeem it? Who knows? There's hope. Help us, Star. Help us, Star Blast number four. <laughs> We're our only hope. <sighs> Again, even with this series wrapping up, I think uh, it's. I'm looking forward to that more of the Star Blast. Here's something for you to think about. What if they ever make a trade of this? Yeah, but they want stuff. No, well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right kitties that's right do your reading come back next week star blast number four all right and remember quantum zoners keep it dilated